Gatekeeping and tribalism is the number one cause of driving people away from a game. And when you have a title like Pantheon Rise of the Fallen that says that it doesn't want to be niche, but then its most hardcore fans and supporters are out there telling other people that they are losers and that they shouldn't come play the game because they aren't the right audience for the title, it's not a good look. I'm going to read a comment from one of my most recent videos. Uh, Asmongold did a video recently called uh, uh, Pantheon, the worst MMORPG he'd ever seen. And while it was a sensationalist video that was obviously over the top with a catchy title and thumbnail to draw people in and get a reaction out of people, the core of what he was discussing was not incorrect. And what's interesting here is that when I did my own reaction video to Asmongold's reaction video, which in turn was a reaction video... It's a chain of reaction video events, which is hilarious if you really think about it. Uh, Sanchari had, Sanchari had this to say on my video. He says, this is a critically important video, Rin, because you're catching on to something I've been arguing quite a bit on our Despair World show lately. It's only going to hurt Pantheon, maybe even to the point of making it financially unsustainable, if the prevailing attitude of VR and the player community is, well, it's just not your game. Sure then, it might be the game of five people, but is that enough income to keep the servers running? I'm glad someone did a critical analysis of Asmongold's admittedly badly expressed sentiments, too, because I think there are huge lessons to be learned from the knee-jerk reactions of an MMR giant like he is. And by that, I mean giant because of his following, not the quality of his content. Now, what's really important here is that Sashari recognizes that Asmongold's video expressed things in a bad way. Like, he took some sentiments and reacted to them and knee-jerk reactions aside they weren't all necessarily accurate however the fact that he also recognizes there are huge lessons to be learned from an mmorpg giant like um asmongold is very important and he also says by giant i mean because it was fo following not the quality of his content and that's something that's very important to the rest of our conversation that we're going to be having today because asmongold is known as an example he's one of many content creators on the internet that produces a lot of content that many would consider to be sensationalist, over-the-top, uh, clickbaity, not necessarily of high quality or high caliber. I personally find it to be entertaining. I don't agree with everything he says, but most of the stuff he puts out is at least amusing enough for me to want to watch it on a regular basis, taking everything he says with a grain of salt, of course. And we all know that he didn't know at the time um, that the footage that he was looking at was three years old and that it was, you know, that it's supposedly been updated by then. But at the end of the day, Visionary Realms still hasn't shared any new footage with anybody, despite the fact that they just had a pre-alpha test recently. They still haven't shared that footage out with anybody or shared anything new to the public. So it's kind of to be expected that those are the knee-jerk reactions people are going to have when the only footage available is years old at this point. Now, what I want to talk about here, though, is the tribalism component. Because in my video, we have someone who literally tells Asmongold to... Yeah, it says that he's a loser. We don't want people like you. We have another person saying that, well, we don't want the gamers of the world to play our game. We only want the people that we want to play Pantheon. We see some very, very tragic, in my mind, um, supporters of tribalism and this sort of elitist attitude of, well, Pantheon isn't the game for everyone. It's our game. You just don't understand what's going on, so you just need to not play it. What? I thought you wanted more... I mean, it's an MMORPG, right? Don't you want more people playing your game? Visionary Realms wants more people playing their game. I want more people playing this game. I want Pantheon to succeed. I need this game to succeed because it's one of the few PvE-centric MMORPGs on the horizon that I'm genuinely interested in. And the last thing I want is for this game to fail because of tribalism and gatekeeping. I'm Tim Anderson, a.k.a. Renfell, sometimes known as the Bearded Dwarven Princess. We're a few minutes in, and I don't even know if I've done my intro. If I did, whatever, I'm repeating it. Uh, if you like what you see here today and you're a new visitor, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you get more like this. And don't forget, YouTube only shares three updates per day via the bell notification system, and I do a lot more than three things per day on YouTube. So make sure to join our Discord and check in throughout the day because there's lots of stuff that happens on the community page via shorts and via premieres and streams and, 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 and. And, and support like all of these amazing people and keep me full time on YouTube and full time streaming. You can do super thanks on uploaded videos like these. You can do super chats and stickers on live streams and premieres and join as a member of the Adventures Guild down there. Don't forget the game dev stuff I'm working out with my wife and my brother via that world behind me. 
check it out. In the meantime, let's dive in to some of these comments here. We're going to scroll down, and there's a lot of commentaries here, so I may have to uh, be a little... Um, uh, we, may be, we may be scanning, I may be editing a little bit as I cut some of the scanning out. <laughs> uh, there's one in particular here that has 29 replies. Let's open this one up um, because one of the things I loved here was the person that said, uh, John, John Hupp said, dumbing down things to get a bigger audience isn't always better. You're not wrong. You're not wrong on that point. Dumbing things down isn't necessarily always better for a game. However, he then follows it up by saying, we have all these other games for gamers. Okay. Now we need something for gamers. And he uses a quoted version of gamers and then an unquoted version of gamers so right here is the type of tribalism and gatekeeping that we're talking about this is someone who considers their version of gaming to be the only correct way to game and therefore he only wants people who understand that version to come play pantheon everyone else who isn't an actual gamer you know the regular gamers the casual gamers he doesn't want those people he only wants the gamers the ones that I like the ones that I think are the right community for Pantheon. Well, how do you get to define who is or who isn't a gamer? Um, I, I actually responded to that. It said, defining yourself as a pure gamer while all other gamers who are part of the larger audience are like those who like dumbed down games is you're literally making the point of why niche titles say niche and never have enough population to make genre changing games. Now, we can scroll down here a little bit more. Um, there's another series here, and I gotta find it. Uh, 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 uh. This person tells Asmund says that Asmund Gold can go pound sand because if he didn't even bother to do enough research to see that this is old footage, then he's just a troll. How is he just a troll? He's reacting to footage that he saw. How can you expect someone who's doing a reaction video to need to take the time? More than, more importantly, why should you expect them to need to take the time? If someone is publishing a video today about Pantheon and it's using footage from three years ago, that's on Pantheon's shoulders, not on the content creator who created it, not on the person reacting to it. If the only footage available to be used or the only footage that they're allowing to be used is three-year-old footage, that's not the reactionary person's problem. They're just reacting to what they're seeing. That's on them. If they want better footage to be reacted to, then they need to release footage from the current pre-alpha tests and show us something new. So Asmongold shouldn't need to go pound sand just because you don't agree with his commentary. But the one I'm looking for is... I'm down here a little bit somewhere. I gotta find it. Uh, dun, dun, dun. I'm glad people like Asmund Gold aren't interested. I want Panther to succeed, but without the sacrifices needed to get people like him to play. Um, we scroll down here and we see saying it's okay to have opinions. Asmund Gold and his type of gamer have tons of games to play, so let them play those again. We don't want them here. Let them play their games. We want our game. Let's we gotta gatekeep. We gotta we gotta it's our game. Pantheon is for us. It's not for other people. It's our game. We don't want other people playing our game. Um and where's the loser comment? Um it's in here somewhere. Yep, yep, yep. John Hupp says I can't stand newer easy MMOs. I play the new ones and they all feel the same. There's no risks. I feel like no reward. I enjoy the journey in old school MMOs. Hopefully Visionary doesn't fold to the pressure and become cookie cutter to make some loser named Asmongold happy. Now I came back and I asked John Hupp, I said, what makes Asmongold a loser? He never replied to me. He never actually gave me a response to why he thinks that Asmongold is a loser. But the reality is that this is literally a reaction that many fanboys have when they come in and they see someone who doesn't have the same reaction as they have. One of my favorite reactions to one of my um, recent videos on Pantheon Rise of the Fallen was having a individual from the VIP community come tell me that I was confused multiple times. He used the word confused and I think four, maybe five comments um, as he was commenting through my video claiming that I didn't understand what Pantheon was about. That is the type of condescending attitude that is exactly what we're discussing here. The gatekeeping and the tribalism that 
Pantheon doesn't need. If Pantheon wants to become more than a niche title, then it has to be something that appeals to many people. Now, I'm not suggesting that they dumb down what they have or make a World of Warcraft clone, but they do have to consider that some of these hardcore old school mechanics have to be softened throughout testing. And also, we have a community of hardcore supporters who have to understand that just because something is written in paper does not mean it's going to make it all the way through pre-alpha, alpha, beta, and to live because nothing, no project in the history of projects, whether it's a video game or, or building a building or a bridge or an engineering project or a satellite or anything, nothing has ever gone from paper to actual production without making changes along the way and making sacrifices to get something completed because not everything that is written on paper is actually good enough to see it through to the end of the day. Now, can Pantheon provide enough fun for enough people to sustain a big enough player base by being old school? Maybe. Shroud of the Avatar and Crowfall tried it. Both of those were helmed by MMORPG veterans. They sold in the ballpark of 120,000 copies of their games, and yet both games basically failed. Um, no one is really playing those games anymore. If Pantheon wants to become a game that transcends that trend, they have to be able to appeal to more than that hardcore audience of 120 to 150,000 players. And the only way that that's going to happen is by providing the world the gamers, the losers, the people like Asmongold with something that they can look at and say, hmm, that actually sounds like kind of fun. I might not like these two or three components, but it actually has these other five things that I enjoy. I'd give it a shot. I mean, even if I don't give it a shot, maybe I'll at least be able to look at it and say, it's not my cup of tea, but I can at least recommend it to other people. Because right now, the knee-jerk reaction is, ooh, that's the worst MMORPG I've ever seen. I don't know that I want to play that. So food for thought. Because again, at the end of the day, if we as a community want Pantheon to be successful and have the most chances of success, we have to transcend tribalism. We have to stop calling people losers. We have to stop telling people they're confused. We have to stop gatekeeping and telling people that they don't understand what Brad McQuaid was really saying. Because only we understand what Brad McQuaid was really saying. That kind of mentality is what drives people away and creates a game that no one wants to play. I don't want that to be the case. I want Pantheon to be as successful as it possibly can. So join me, brothers and sisters of the MMORPG community, and let's celebrate all of the things that bring us together. And let's together go forth and help make Pantheon Rise of the Fallen the best game it possibly can be. Until next time, I'm Tim Anderson, a.k.a. Renfield, the Bearded Dwarven Princess, signing off. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, drop your comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.